Do you want to be able to call a thousand images in just under four minutes? Hello everyone, this is Ernesto with Aftershoot and in this video we're going to see the magic. I'm going to show you guys how I basically cheat the system by using AI to take work off my back and not only deliver my images faster, but also stress less over the cooling process. This is what our magical unicorns here at Aftershoot can do for you. In this case, I'm going to work with almost a thousand photos, but all of you wedding and event photographers know that's not always the case. A wedding can last up to 12 hours sometimes and it can go for several days. So what happens when you get home with those 7,000 or 8,000 photos? I mean, having so many images to go through can be a little stressing. I used to just walk around the house, looking at my computer from afar, just dreading the moment I had to sit down and select my photos. And this is not just for weddings. It can be concerts, birthday parties, corporate portraits, sports. It really doesn't matter. If you shoot a lot, we can help. But enough of just talking. Let's get the magic started. The first thing you gotta do when you open up Aftershoot is create a new album. Now over here, we're going to import the photos we're going to select. I open this up and I look for the photos in my gallery so I can start the process. Over here, Aftershoot is gonna ask me what kind of photo shoot this was. Now this is very important because we have different photography genres here. Let's make it simple. If we're shooting a wedding and the bride's father is crying because it's an emotional moment, those tears, those emotions make for good photos. But if we're taking photos, I don't know, of a family and the kids are crying, those tears, those crying photos are not good for us. So when Aftershoot goes through the selection process for a wedding and Aftershoot sees some tears, it's gonna include them in the selection. But if we shot a family portrait and there's kids crying, Aftershoot is not gonna include those tears in our selections. So different kinds of photography genres require different selection algorithms to give us a better result. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna choose others because this is the kind of gender I use when I've shot these kind of events. Next. Now, all of our photos get loaded into Aftershoot before we start the selection process. What we gotta do now is go up here and click on Call. After we've done that, we go to Start Calling. Now, we have two ways of doing this. We can get it automatically done for us, which means we're gonna select how many images we want as a final result of the selection process. If we want a lot of images, a standard number, less or an extreme call, or we can choose the selection parameters that we wanna use for this selection. Let's, let's do that. Customize AI cool. Now we have this right here. The first thing we gotta do is we gotta tell Aftershoot if we want the software to create a highlights of our selection. That means after Aftershoot is done with the selection, it's gonna select from that selection, the best images, kind of a best of the best situation. Now imagine you just shot a wedding yesterday. You shot 8,000, 10,000 photos. It is the very next day and the bride is already sending you a message. Hey, do you think you can send me the best 10 images? I just wanna post them on Instagram or something like that. If you had to go through 8,000, 10,000, 9,000, whatever number of photos to give her 10, you would go crazy. But if you have done the cooling with Aftershoot, you can use the highlights to send them some images to keep them at ease until you deliver the full gallery. In my case, I do not need highlights, so this can be turned off. It really doesn't matter. Now, this is the important part, what we do with duplicate photos. Here we can see that you can create small groups, standard groups, big groups, or large groups. But what does this mean? In order for Aftershoot to select the best images from our photo shoot, it has to group them according to similarities. Now, if we form small groups, Aftershoot is only gonna group the photos that are identical. Let's say this is a photo, and you have me right here, and you took photo, 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 photo. It is always me in the same angle, the same frame, the same expression. Everything looks pretty much identical. All of those photos get grouped into one group, let's call that group A. If all of a sudden, when you have small groups, you shot, I don't know, a different angle of me, photo, 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 that can be group B. And let's say you took a different angle, photo, 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 that can be group C. Now, after she has group A, group B, and group C, it is gonna get one photo from group A, one photo from group B, and one photo from group C. When we have small groups, when we have standard or bigger groups, Aftershoot is gonna consider inside the group photos that are similar, but can introduce, I don't know, some differences. Let's make it simpler. When we have small groups, this, this, and this are three different groups. When we have larger groups, this, this, and this can be included in the same group because it is, after all, the same person in the same spot with the same background. Some difference might appear in the photos, but essentially it's the same. 
So if you have three groups and you get one photo from each group, you have three photos. If you only have one group because we can accept more differences in the group, you only get one photo as a result. Essentially, what you need to know is the larger the groups, the less photos you're going to get in your final selection. The smaller the groups, because it's only joining together the photos that are identical, you're going to have more photos as your final selection. Now we want to tell the software what to do with blurry images. We can either select to identify them or not, and after Aftershoot identifies the blurry images, we got to tell him what to do with the images. If we want the software to be strict and not include uh, blurry images in our selection, if we want the software to include some blurry images and leave some behind, or if we want the software to include the blurry images, we really don't care. They can be there, no problem. In my case, I want it to be strict. I do not want any blurry images in my photos. I don't like that trend. And lastly, we can tell Aftershoot to detect or not detect images with closed eyes, right here. If we care about the closed eyes, then we say, listen, detect them, separate them into a different category, and I'll check it later. Or, you know what, if they have their eyes closed or if they don't have their eyes open, uh, whatever, just include them in selection. In my case, I want Aftershoot to identify them. Now we can start the cooling process. Now this is important. During the time Aftershoot is going through the cooling process, we do not need to be in the computer. We can go do something else. We can spend time with our family, have a drink, go out, play some sports. It really doesn't matter because the software can do it all on its own. Eventually, we're going to come back to it and correct it because this is, after all, AI. So our corrections are going to teach Aftershoot about our particular preferences and photography style. Think of it as an assistant. When you hire a photography assistant, this person knows about general photography, but does not know about your particular likings and your particular photography style. So they got to learn from you. In this case, Aftershoot. AI also has to learn something from you. It is trained in photography in general, but does not know about your personal preferences. When the selection is done, you're going to get an email saying your cooling process is done. You can come back and check what is done for you. This is what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so this was a launch event for a makeup brand. Uh, we have several different images here. And as you can see over here in top right side, we have different categories of images. We got the selected images, 320. We have some blurry photos, some closed eyes, and we have all the photos. So the total amount of photos I had was 918, and it was called into 320 in three minutes and 35 seconds. That is almost a thousand photos in under four minutes. Now that's crazy. Imagine how long you would have taken to call a thousand photos into 300 just by doing it manually. The amount of time Aftershoot saves you is just nuts. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to correct the selection because like I told you, the AI has to learn from someone and that someone is me. So I click on the selected images and I go through them. I see some product photos. I see some photos of the venue, some details the first people that arrived, and etc., etc. So if you can see some photos have this number in the top left corner. What that means is this photo has other six images in this group, but this one has been the one that has been selected. I can double click to check it out and I get a larger view. So these are all the photos in the group and this is the selected one. Now we can add more photos into our selection or we can change the selection after shoot has made for us. Let's, let's see how that works. This is one photo that was selected. This is a different photo that was selected, very similar to this one. I like the one that had been chosen by Aftershoot. This one, well, the flash went a little crazy. This is a different photo, very much like the first one. And then this last one is very like the second one we saw. Okay, let's say I like this photo, but I also like this one. Or let's say I want to replace this photo for this one. So what I could do is I can go to this last photo and we want to add it into our selection. So I'm going to press the A button in our keyboard and that's adding the photo into our selection. If we want to use this photo instead of the previous one, that means we, gotta, we wanna get rid of the previous one, we can press the X key in our keyboard to get rid of it. And just like that, we change our selection because in Aftershoot, nothing is written in stone. You always have the last word. The software is gonna help you out, it's gonna assist you, but eventually you are gonna make the last decision. Let's go back to the gallery to see about other photos. So, like we saw before, we have the selected images here, the blurry ones, the closed eyes, and all of the images over here. But we also have photos like this, which have a warning sign. What does this mean? Well, if we open up this group over here, we can see that Aftershoot is warning us about this photo, which is included in our selection, but why is this? Well, what's happening here is Aftershoot saw the group, 
grouped the photos and saw that in this group, none of the photos follow the selection parameters that I introduced in the beginning. So what Aftershoot is telling us is, hey, by the way, I grouped these photos, I selected this one as the best one, but it still doesn't follow the selection parameters that you include. This is important because Aftershoot is not gonna do anything for us. It's not gonna get rid of the whole group saying, none of this work and not give us an image. It's always gonna give us something, but if there's a problem with the group, say eyes closed or blurry photos or whatever, it is gonna show the warning label so we know to check this group and make the last decision ourselves. Let's see the closed eyes photos. Let's see this one here. After shoot thought this was a closed eyes photo because yeah, you can barely see the model's eyes. If I wanna introduce this photo into our selection, I press the A key and all of a sudden she's been included. Now here, she's about to blink, so I'm not gonna include that one. So I go back to the gallery. And just like that, I work on adding and subtracting photos from my selection till the final result is exactly what I want. Now in the beginning, when you first start working with Aftershoot, you're probably gonna have to correct a lot of what the software is selecting for you because again, the software knows about photography but does not know about your particular style or likings. As you work more with Aftershoot, the software is gonna learn more from you and eventually it's gonna get better and better and better because it's always learning from the corrections you make within the software. So after you're done with the selection process, you can export the photos into a folder or you can open them up straight into the editing software you wanna use. Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, Capture One, whatever. And that's it. That's how I call almost a thousand photos in just under four minutes. Don't forget to follow Aftershoot in all of our social media to always have the latest information in what we have to offer. See you guys in the next video. Bye.